there is a scene in this film that I'm about to review where a guy sees Godzilla, who's about to, with one step, crush his house. And he's screaming, no, please don't, not my house. And I'm thinking, the military, the army, anything involving big guns cannot stop Godzilla. You think by just telling him to stop, he'll stop? Hmm? No? I didn't think so. Godzilla against Mechagodzilla. Now, I really liked the 70s Mechagodzilla, I enjoyed the 90s Mechagodzilla, but this one, this Mechagodzilla right here, is epic. Now, this Godzilla film is not the best, neither is it the greatest, nor the most decent, it is still really enjoyable, but I found that they spent more time with the characters who are trying to make Mechagodzilla than... Godzilla and Mechagodzilla actually fighting. Plus, the back cover to this film, bear with me, says it has Mechagodzilla, Godzilla, and Mothra? Yeah, there's no cameo, there's just a flashback to Mothra, but if that's if that's the reason why he's on the back cover, then why don't they have also Bigfoot Gyrus or whatever that one was that was all, not in the Godzilla series, I don't think, but from another seri series, and why isn't he on the back cover? Why? And you'll never guess what this film is. Give up? Okay. It's another sequel to the original. Why? This is like the fourth or fifth time they've done that. There is one thing that is answered in this film, though, and that is how the hell does all of Tokyo and Japan get fixed? over the course of a year or so. And it's simple. They say that after every monster attack that has happened in the certain area that the film takes place in, uh, the townsfolk, the city livers, they all help to rebuild the city. I don't buy it. Me, personally, I would give up after round two. There's a cool tribute to the original movie in this film. And that is the trilobite. They had one in the original that signified that Godzilla is from prehistoric times because the tri trilobite was extinct for a very long time. And in this one, one scientist has a trilobite in a tank and it's robotic. So it is like, yeah, well, we'll have, we'll help you, we'll let you make Mecha Godzilla because you know how to make animals and robots connect. I guess they would call that trilobite a trilobot. They do tie past events into this film from the original. Uh, Mecha Godzilla is actually Godzilla bones that have been coated with all armor plating and stuff, or something like that. It's like basically Godzilla's bones are Mecha Godzilla. So now it's like the old Godzilla fighting the new Godzilla. And I'm not gonna lie, but new Godzilla looks like dopey. Like, it doesn't look that great. I don't like the new look. Mainly because I fell in love with a Godzilla from Godzilla, Mothra, and King Ghidorah giant monsters all at attack. I loved the look of Godzilla in that film. And then they transition it from that look to this look in this film. And it's like, he doesn't compare. The characters in this film are kind of depressing, actually. You got one girl who is a... Uh, responsible for some deaths and she lives her life wishing she wasn't even alive and she doesn't even fear death anymore and then there's this a father and daughter and the father's always trying to hit on that girl who doesn't want to live anymore and he's all dorky and it's kind of like dude that's sad and then his daughter she her best friend is a sleeping grass is what they call it and uh she just is missing her mother and it's kind of like all depression and everything. And then, I just don't like the characters in this film. I mean, the main chick is sort of badass, but throughout the whole time she's like, I don't care if I die. And what the hell was up with that sleeping grass anyways? It had no relevance whatsoever. And the main chick tells the little girl that you should get rid of it because I kept mine for too long and that was a bad mistake. And I thought that was going to feed into the plot later on, but no. It's just in the little girl's lap the whole time, like... 
What? What is up with it? Yes, it goes to sleep and wakes up. What's the relevance there? As you can see, I had a few problems with this film. The acting and characters were questionably decent. Um, the special effects were great, though. The action was great when it happened. Most of the time, the characters are just trying to find out how to build Mecha Godzilla, which can be a, kind of a disappointment. And it's just overall decent. Well, overall, I give Godzilla against Mechagodzilla a 2.5 out of 5. I am Brian Gatto, host of Horror Show Movie Reviews. Make sure to like my Facebook page in the description below and to leave comments and subscribe. Subscribe.